Today, we're going to talk about a problem that involves cups being stacked together. As you can tell in the picture, if we only have one cup, we see the base of that cup and the rim of that cup. But when we start stacking other cups with it, we don't see the new bases for each of the cups. They're hidden inside the base of the first cup. What we do see is a rim for each of the cups. So as the stack is getting taller, the only part that's actually changing is the number of rims that are increasing as the cup is being put into the stack. Question one asks us to create a function rule that gives the actual height of a stack in cups, a stack of cups, in terms of the number of cups in the stack. In other words, what would we do with the number of cups in our stack to figure out how tall the stack is going to be? Well, I've got a couple variables already written for us. H is going to represent the height of our stack. It'll be measured in centimeters. And N will represent the number of cups in the situation. So one thing that we know is that the height of our stack, our H, is always going to equal one base. I'm just going to write it out in words right now. One base plus one rim for every cup. So what do we know here? Well, again, we know that the height is going to be H. We know the height of the base. We know the size of the base. The base is eight centimeters. And we know that no matter how many cups are in our stack, we still only need one of those. So we're gonna have an eight. Plus, now we need to do the rims. We have one rim for every cup. So in that second picture, if we have five cups, we have five rims. Each rim is six-tenths of a centimeter. So we would have to multiply that six-tenths of a centimeter times five, because in that case, we had five cups. But what if we had six cups? Then we'd multiply six-tenths by six. What if we had 12 cups? Well, then we'd multiply six-tenths times 12. So the number of cups is going to vary. We're using the variable n. So whatever that number is, we know we're going to multiply it by 6 tenths. So to write that out, we're going to start with the 6 tenths. We always put our coefficient first. And then the variable n. So again, the 8 comes from the height of the base, but we only ever see one of those. And then to find the height of the rims, we have to do 6 tenths times however many cups we have. And the number of cups is represented with the letter N. Now, we are going to create a table using the function rule that we just created to see what the actual height of stacks will be depending on how many of cups are in the stack. So if there's only one cup in the stack, we know that we need to take our eight, which was our base, plus our rim size, which is our 6 tenths, but there's only one cup, so we only have one rim. So I'd only multiply that 6 tenths times 1. When I do that, I get a total height of 8 and 6 tenths. But what if I have two cups? Well, then I'd still have just the base, which was 8 centimeters, and each rim was 6 tenths of a centimeter, but now I have two of those. So I have to multiply that by 2. And when I work that out, my total height would become 9 and 2 tenths centimeters. If there's three cups, we would do the one base, which was 8, plus the 6 tenths centimeter for the rim, but now I'd have three of them. So I would have a total height of 10 and 4 tenths centimeters. I would like you to try to complete the next three rows on your own. Did you see the mistake that I made when I was doing the line, the row for um, three cups? Hopefully you caught it. I caught it as I was finishing up my table. The height of that stack should have been 9.8 centimeters. But go ahead and compare what you did in the next three rows to what I have for the next three rows. 
Hopefully you caught what happened with the bottom row. The number of cups jumped from five cups all the way up to 10. So hopefully you remember to put a 10 as our N value, our number of cups, and then determine the height. If you need to fix any mistakes that you made, just like I had made a mistake also, go ahead and take care of that right now. Now that we have the table set up, we are going to graph the information from the table onto a grid. So I have the number of cups in the stack as our X variable and the height of stacks as our Y variable. And I've got the table all set up for you already, the graph, I should say. So when there was one cup, we said we had a height of 8.6 centimeters. So I want to go across the horizontal axis to the one, one cup, and I need to go up to 8.6. Well, this row here is for the eight, and then it skips, and then it goes up to 10. So I know the one that we skipped is a nine. I know 8.6 is just a little bit more than halfway between eight and nine. So I'm going to put a dot right there. I need to do that for two cups. Two cups had a height of 9.2 centimeters. So if I know that line is nine, then right about there would be 9.2. I want you to try to finish the next four dots on your graph and then check it with mine. So stop the video and continue your graphing. Compare your dot placement to mine. Did you remember to jump all the way over to the 10 for the number of cups for that final dot? Hopefully you did. And now you should see that they're kind of all falling into a line. Since we had to do a little bit of estimating, the dots might be just a tad bit off of a line, but you should be able to see from this that this is a linear function. The values in the function will form a straight line on the graph. So now ask yourself, if they form a straight line, why aren't we drawing a line through them? Well, the reason for that is because since this is a specific situation where we're talking about numbers of cups and heights of a stack, we have to ask ourselves, is it possible to have values in between the ones that we have on the table? For example, I have a dot for one cup and for two cups. Could I have something in between there? Could I have one and a half cups in my stack? And hopefully right now you're shaking your head, no, Mrs. Pollock, you can't have one and a half cups in the stack. So what you've realized is that this is what we called a discrete graph. As long as we're talking specifically about cups, and the height of the stack. We cannot connect these with a solid line because there are not values in between one and two cups. There's not five and a half cups. There's not three and three fourths cups. So we have to stick with the actual whole number values that we have without connecting them. This is a discrete graph. So for question three, we are told now to figure out what the total height of the stack would be if we now have 12 cups. So we have two ways that we can do this. We can use our function rule, which we did in the first problem, or we can use the graph, which we did in the second problem. So what I've chosen to do is use the function rule first, and then to verify that answer, to see if it looks right, we'll use the graph. So we're still gonna be using both of our representations. If we use the function rule, then we have to start off with our function, which said that h equals eight plus six tenths n. But now we know that we're going to find the height of 12 cups. So our n value becomes a 12. So we're gonna have eight plus six tenths times 12. So, I want you to take a moment and try to figure out what that is on your own. So hopefully you came to the same value that I did, which is that the height of a stack of 12 cups would be 15 and 2 tenths centimeters. So now we're going to try to verify that with our graph. And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to slide back down to our graph. And I'm going to grab the line function, the line drawing tool there. And I'm going to try my best to draw a line that goes from where I know my first point was up to where the 10 was, and then try to keep it straight through there. 
and then release. And it released a little bit low, but you'll get the idea. So now I go over on the graph to the number of cups being 12. And I'm going to show you my thinking here. I kind of look straight up from the 12 cups until I hit my graph line. And I hit it right there. So if I now look over to the left and see what that height is, I can see that it is just a really, really close to 15 centimeters. So it does seem logical that the answer that we got to number three of 15.2 centimeters does seem like that could be the correct answer. It pretty much matches what we have on the graph, although on the graph we had to do some estimating. So now we're ready for number four. Number four says, how many cups would fit stacked in a space one meter in height? One meter. Well, that's a unit of measure that we haven't been using in this problem. We've been talking about centimeters. So I gave you the fact that one meter is the same thing as 100 centimeters. So this time, we know how tall the stack is. We want to try to figure out how many cups there would be in that stack. So we're still going to use our function of h equals 8 plus 6 tenths n. But this time we know h. h is 100 centimeters. So we're going to replace h with the number 100 and then copy everything else down. And now we're trying to find the value of n. So we're going to go back to what we did in the first unit of math class of algebra, where we learned how to solve equations. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my wall. And my variable is on the right hand side. So I'm going to get rid of this 8 that is being added to it. And to get rid of that, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. 100 minus 8 is 92. My 8s cancel. I still have 6 tenths n. So now, to get rid of multiplying by 6 tenths, we divide by 6 tenths on both sides. So we end up with a value of 153 and 3 tenths repeating is our value for n. Well, the problem with that is that we can't have part of a cup. We can't have 3 tenths repeating of a cup. That doesn't even make any sense. So since you cannot have part of a cup, we have to eliminate that part of the answer. So we will then say that our number of cups would be 153, okay? Because we can't have that part of a cup coming after it. So in that case, we had to sort of just think logically, what kind of answer makes sense? It has to be a whole number of cups. Question five says, find a function that gives the number of cups in a stack in terms of the height of the stack. In other words, they're asking us to solve our original function for n. And that's pretty much what we just did in the last problem, only we had actual numbers to put in there. We knew that there was a height of 100 centimeters. This time, we're just going to rearrange our function, which said that h equals 8 plus 6 tenths n. We're going to rearrange that to solve this function for n so that it will work no matter what height we have. So again, this goes back to what we've done in a prior unit. So I'm going to draw my wall, and my job now is to get the n, that variable, all by itself. So to do that, like we just did in the last problem, the first thing we're going to do is subtract 8. But now since I don't have a value for h, I have to simply write this as h minus 8 equals, and I still have the 6 tenths n left on that side. So now I have to divide by my 6 tenths. So I have to divide h minus 8 by 6 tenths. And since I don't know the value for h, since I can't actually find a value for that top, I'm just going to rewrite it exactly the way that is. That whatever the height is, I will subtract 8 from it, and then divide that by 6 tenths, and that will determine the number of cups. So I have now solved my function for the number of cups instead of having it solved for the height like it was originally.
So now we are ready for the final question. And this one sounds confusing when you read it at first, so I tried to make it easier to understand. It says if a new stack is created with the base of the cups remaining the same, so our base is still eight centimeters, but the height of the lip of the cup, or what we call the rim, is doubled. So the lip or the rim is twice as tall as it used to be. We wanna know if the new stack would be more than or less than or equal to twice the height of the original. In other words, it's saying if the height of the lip doubles, does that double the height of the stack? That's what we're trying to find out. So I've given us a couple of things to consider here. We're going to talk about the height of the new stack compared to twice the height of the original stack. Well, let's start with the original stack. We knew that the original stack, the height of it, was determined by taking our base of 8 plus 6 tenths times however many cups we have, our n. But now if we want twice that, I have to multiply that quantity by 2. Twice means 2 times. So let's see what happens when I work that out. This is a distributive property problem. So I'm going to use our cherry bombing method to find the value of this. I know 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 times 6 tenths n is 1 and 2 tenths n. And I can't simplify that any further because they are not like terms. One is a constant, the 16 is a constant, and the other one has a variable of n with it. So that's as simplified as I can make that. So now let's go back and take a look at the height of the new stack. Well, now the new stack still has the same base. It still has a base of 8 centimeters. But the thing that's different is now the lip is doubled, which means instead of it only being 6 tenths of a centimeter, we have to do double that. Double 6 tenths or twice 6 tenths is 1 and 2 tenths. And that would still be multiplied by however many cups we have. So the question is, is this expression, 8 plus 1 and 2 tenths n, less than the other expression, 16 plus 1 and 2 tenths n? Is it equal to it or is it greater than it? Well, here's an easy way to find out. They have a part that is the same in both of them. They both have 1 and 2 tenths n being added onto something. So since they both have that, we can sort of cancel those out on both of them. And now we're left with just comparing this 8 to this 16. Is 8 less than 16? Is 8 greater than 16? Is 8 equal to 16? Well, hopefully you're saying 8 is less than 16, Mrs. Pollock. We all know that. So 8 is less than 16. And because of that, the new stack... The height of that new stack will be less than twice the original stack. There was a lot going on in that final problem, so please feel free to replay any part of this video that you need to to be able to understand what is happening with this function of the height of the cups. Thank you.